really simple song it's, it's it just says holy 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 lord god of heaven and earth anyways you'll get it <laughs> oh yeah i don't think i've heard that one before
how are you, how are you seeing them, bro? You took, you took the picture of them? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not that one, though. I'll bring it she over did. here a little closer so you can see. Oh, you already know the words? Well, I know the words, and I just have to kind of look at the chords a little bit. Uh, oh, wait. <laughs> bring these guys over with us. <laughs> I didn't get that line. Yeah, the last song I didn't have. But... Yeah. No sweeter name. We started kind of late on the maze. Maybe we'll skip to. Oh, no, 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 I wonder if I know anything that we sing at church. I don't know. Let's just do this one. It's nice and easy. <laughs> From Psalm 121. I lift my eyes up.
<laughs> I read that from Cutlass. That one? Yeah, Cutlass sings that song. This one? Oh, I didn't know they wrote that one. Yeah, Cutlass. Yeah, I remember Cutlass. Yeah. Cool. Well, so so that was one he knew. That's, that's why I heard that song. Yeah. You guys know Oceans? Mm hmm. You know Oceans? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, I heard it before. I heard this one before. Yeah. What a beautiful name. Oh, we do this one, don't we? Hair is in Heaven. Do we? Do we do Hair Hair is in Heaven at church? Uh, um, once again. It's yeah. like. Yeah, we've seen that here before. Okay. It's been a while. Okay. We don't do it too often. Yeah. Oh, songs. Yeah. <laughs> well, most of them are my songs, but nobody's going to know those. Um, I have Victor's Crown, but I don't think they've ever sang that here. I don't think they've ever sang this one either. <laughs> okay, so I think we found a couple of them. Do we sing What a Beautiful Name here? Yeah, I've heard that a few times here. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know cut listed that song. We used to do that song. I didn't know where it came from. Oh, so that was a song. So that wasn't from a guy? It wasn't from that college guy. He must have learned it from Cutlass. They were just coming up at that time. Uh, they just came, they, they came from Portland, I think. And they were just coming, we went to school in James, so. They were just coming up at that time. So that makes sense that it would be one of their songs. All right. Um, Do you want to look at this one, Greg? For the spirit of the Lord is in you. Yeah, the dance is all around. The spirit of the Lord is here. Sing that again. Yeah, the spirit is Oh. 
Do these other ones? <laughs> oh, it's up to you. Yeah. Yes. Okay. God, I just thank you that you brought us all here together tonight, people on the Zoom and people here. And I just pray that you will get everything that you want in this Bible study tonight and that um, we will hear your voice and that you will come closer to you. And we thank you so much, Lord. Jesus. Amen. Okay. You guys still there? Yeah. Nick, I'm sorry. I totally didn't do what I gave you to put on the screen. <laughs> and Liberty. Sorry. I went to everywhere. <laughs> he doesn't want to turn on this mic. I'm sure it's too noisy there. All right. So, and this is being recorded, just so you know, so that it can be thrown on the YouTube channel afterwards for people that don't get to hear yeah. right now. So, okay. Um. So let's see, it's been a couple weeks, because last week we just did Thanksgiving, but we were talking about, um, we did kind of like ways God talks to us when we're helping people with him. So now we're doing like adventures with God, and oh, I was going to talk about, let's see, can you guys still be there if I <laughs> do something else there for a second? I don't know. Um, I was going to refer to my blog that I wrote this week a little bit. I don't know how well this is going to work. But... Let me know, I guess. No, let's not start there. Okay. Um, first we're going to start in this story in second Corinthians 20, because it has kind of every, all the principles that we're going to talk about is in this story. Where's my glass? Okay. Okay. Second Chronicles 20. Okay. Don't be interested. That's in it's in the Old Testament. Oh, that's right. Um, it's after Kings and before Ezra and Nehemiah, which are both small, so I don't know if that'll help you. It's before mm -hmm. Psalms. Yeah. Okay. okay. What chapter? Um, 20. Is it 1st Corinthians? 2nd uh, Chronicles. Oh, Chronicles. Chronicles. Yeah, it's in the Old Testament. find it okay all right so we're just going to start in verse one and after this it happened that the sons of moab and the sons of ammon came in and with them from the ammonites to battle against jehoshaphat who was the king of judah at the time um this was 
during the time when Israel was kind of split into two kingdoms. The northern kingdom was like most of the tribes, and the southern kingdom was just Judah and Benjamin. And so Jehoshaphat, the southern kingdom historically followed God more than the northern kingdom. The northern kingdom usually had a lot of idolatry. So they came in and spoke to Jehoshaphat and told him, excuse me, a great multitude has come against you from beyond the sea, from Syria. And behold, they are in Hazazan Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat was afraid, and he decided to seek Yahweh and proclaim the fast over all Judah. And that's all of his kingdom. And Judah was gathered to inquire of Yahweh. So they came in to seek the Lord from all the cities of Judah. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of Yahweh at the front, in the front of the new court and said, O Yahweh, the God of our fathers, aren't you the God in heaven? Yes, you rule over all the kingdoms of the nations and in your hand is power and might. And there is no one able to withstand you. Aren't you our God? You have driven out the inhabitants of this land from before your people Israel and gave it to the seed, the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever, and they have lived in it and have built a sanctuary in it to you for your name, saying, if evil comes on us, whether sword, just judgment or pestilence or famine, and we stand before this house and before you, for your name is in this house, and cry out to you from our distress, and you will hear and save and now behold, the sons of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom ye did not allow Israel to go against when they came out of the land of Egypt, for they turned away from them and did not destroy them. And yes, see, they are repaying us by coming in to drive us out of your possession that you have given us to possess. O oh, our God, will you not execute ju- judgment upon them? For there is no power in us before this great multitude that has come against us, and we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. And all Judah was standing before the Lord and their infants and their wives and their sons. And on Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of all of this, he was from the sons of Asaph. He was a Levite, which was the temple people. And the spirit of Yahweh came on him in the midst of the congregation. And he said, listen, all Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat. This is what Yahweh says to you. You shall not fear or be afraid of the face of this great multitude, because the battle is not yours, but God. Tomorrow go down against them. See, they are coming up by the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them in the end of the valley at the front of the wilderness of Jeruel. You shall not fight in this. Station yourselves and stand and see the salvation of Yahweh with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid or fear. Tomorrow go out before them, and Yahweh will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his face to the earth, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Israel fell down before Yahweh to bow themselves to Yahweh. And the Levites of the sons of the Kohathites and the sons of the Korahites rose to give praise to Yahweh, the God of Israel, with a loud voice on high. They all got up early in the morning and went out to the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, O Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in Yahweh your God and be steadfast. Believe in his prophets and prosper. And he consulted with the people and appointed singers to Yahweh and those giving praise to the glory of holiness when going out before those armed and said, Give thanks to Yahweh because his loving kindness is forever. And at the time they began to sing and praise, Yahweh sat, set ambushes against the sons of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir that had come against Judah, and they were beaten. And the sons of Ammon stood up in Moab against the people of Mount Seir to devote and destroy. And when they finished with the inhabitants of Seir, they helped everyone against the neighbor to destroy. And when Judah had come to the wash tower to the wilderness and they looked toward the multitude, Behold, they were all dead bodies falling to the earth, and there was no survivor. So Jehoshaphat and his people came to seize their plunder and found among them in abundance both riches and valuable things on the corpses, and they stripped off for themselves until there was no carrying it, and they were three days plundering the spoil because it was much. And then on the fourth day, they gathered at the Valley of Blessing and blessed Yahweh there. And then... They went back with joy because God made them rejoice over their enemies. And then everyone heard about it and they were afraid of him. So God gave him rest all around. So there's like several things in this story 
like, first of all, um, no matter what you're doing, it's good to listen to what God is saying, like to listen for his strategies and for his wisdom and for his advice. And so this, what we're talking about tonight is kind of like changing the world, but it's also for everything else in between, like changing other people, helping other people with their stuff and letting God help you with your stuff. Like no matter what you're doing, like ask God. So they, they all called a fast and they all came to ask God what to do. And then the next thing is that when he was praying, there was, he was praising God. He was saying, you're so awesome and big and powerful. And, and we know that you're just, and you're going to do what's right and help us, you know, we're your people and everything like that. So he, like most of his prayer is like, I don't know if you're reminding God or you're reminding yourself probably that how great God is, you know, and like what you focus on, you empower. And so that's like the main thing in this is when you focus on God's goodness, you empower God's goodness. And I think that's where we fall down. Like as Christians, a lot is where I see a lot of people like watching the news or whatever, and they just get so caught up in this negative energy, I guess. And, and we can't really help our society and our culture if we're just like focusing on the negative all the time like we have to look at god we have to see his goodness and we have to focus on his goodness and that's how we empower his goodness like to change things in our lives and in our country and the world you know so i think that praise is a super important part of it and we'll talk more about that but um so then god talked to them so they were listening and watching to see what god would say to them and then he gave them a prophetic word um, and told them, like, his strategy. And so then they believed God. So, like, when God talks to you, then you believe God. And then you do what he, you, you implement his strategy. Like, you do whatever he said. So that's what they did. They believed him. Obviously, they believed him because else they wouldn't be, like, praising him and so happy about it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Before it happened. And then they were happy afterwards. And that's how he wants us to be. He wants us to be thankful and happy before it happens because we believe what he said is going to happen. And then afterwards, too, because thankfulness is just this super powerful thing that we want to just wallow in <laughs> all the time. Because like I said, like thankfulness is focusing on God's goodness when you focus on it. The more you focus on it, the more you empower it, and the more it just that's, how, that's where God wants us to live so um let's see okay so now we're gonna go and talk about um world changers some more here i'm gonna show you guys this painting that i did because it's about changing it's about being a world a world changer and i'm i don't know if i'm done with it yet because it doesn't have any faces and i'm afraid i'll know if i put faces on and i'm always like that but here you can see, I'm sorry for you Zoom viewers. Okay, there's a picture of Jesus. There's a picture of, this is the bride of Christ. So you have like a lady in the picture. I'm trying to describe it to them. <laughs> and then Jesus is behind her and he's like embracing her. And then her hand is on the world. And then she's looking at him. Of course, I didn't do the faces yet. Because we look at Jesus and we see his heart for the world. And then we give our hands to him to change the world with. And so um, that's what this is about. I don't know if you guys can hear me <laughs> on the Zoom call. Okay. I don't know how this is going to work with the YouTube, but we'll see. Okay. Um. So now we're going to go into this, John chapter 10, talk about, we must have got like a word of knowledge with somebody there. Yeah, that was a prophetic word. Mm -hmm. That was a prophecy Yeah. in the story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a prophecy. And he must have, not, must have just came to his mind. It doesn't say exactly. Right. But in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would come on you. Like, he didn't live inside of you like we have. He would come on you. Like, and I don't think there was any question because it was yeah. so unusual, you know. Right. 
he would come on you and then you would prophesy or you would do some wild feat or whatever. Like mm -hmm. that's how Samson did everything. Like the Holy Spirit would come on him and he would just like kill everybody. And then, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <pretty> much. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I think probably in the old Testament it was probably really strong and like they didn't, they couldn't really doubt it as much. I'm guessing like, I don't know. And when we have the Holy Spirit inside of us, sometimes we're like, well, is that me or is that you or is that somebody else? Like, yeah, yeah. you know, because it's so quiet inside of us and we yeah. have to learn to like listen to where he is inside of us, you know. And yeah, it's a little bit of a process, but Jesus said that we know his voice. So we just like lean on that and trust him that he knows how to lead us. Okay, John 10. John 10, 34 to 38. Does one of you want to read it? 34 to 38? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Okay. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, you are gods? If he called them gods to whom the word of God came, and scripture cannot be broken, do you say of him whom the Father consecrated and sent into the world, you are blaspheming because I said, I am the Son of God? If I am not doing the, Father, the works of my Father, then do not believe me. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works, that you may know and understand the Father is in me, and I am in the Father. Yeah. So, okay, so we're going to go look at what he was quoting, because he was quoting from Psalm. 82. Let's see if here. 82. Focus a lot. Yeah. Psalm 82. Do you want to read that, Michael? Which one is it? Psalm 82. Just the whole thing. You're probably still reading the last stuff. Oh, that's okay. Oh, yeah. I, I don't want to rush you, but this is where he's quoting from. Okay. Yeah, I'll try to read it, but I forgot. Uh, sometimes I, my eyes, eyesight gets blurry when I read. Oh, it's okay. But I might be yeah. able to do it. Okay, you can try in a few. The psalm is a psalm of Asaph. Mm-hmm. Asaph. Asaph. Yeah. Asaph. Yeah. God presides over heaven's court. He pronounces judgment on the heavenly beings. How long will you hand down unjust decisions by favoring the wicked? Give justice to the poor and the orphan. Uphold the rights of the oppressed and the destitute. destitute. Mm -hmm. Rescue the poor and helpless. Deliver them from the grasp of evil people. But these oppressors know nothing. They are so ignorant. They wander about in darkness. While the whole world is shaken to the core, I say you are God. You are all the children of the Most High, but you will die like mere mortals and fall like every other ruler. Rise up, O God, and judge the earth. For all the nations belong to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that the NLT or something? What version? Yeah, this is NLT. So okay. I, go, I kind of go back. NLT and New King James Version. Okay. I don't know if there's really, there is, like, yeah. I don't know which one's more accurate. King James you know, is more accurate. That's more accurate. Huh? Yeah, but it's easier to read, but it is sometimes, I, I don't like it because it feels like sometimes it just misses the point. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've been thinking too. Yeah, so yeah, I didn't, I didn't like that translation of this, but okay, so I'll show you what I have here. So I have the Hebrew which really helps a lot. And so you can see um, God stands in the assembly of God and he judges in the midst of the gods. And that's actually the word they use there, gods. Um, and the interesting thing is that this is the same word. You can't see from your, where you are, but look at this Elohim and Elohim. I mean, I know you guys don't know Hebrew, but mm -hmm. you can kind of look and see that it's the same word, right? And this is actually a plural. This is actually the plural of God in both of these places. And this, even from the very beginning, it uses this word. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And it uses this plural word. 
Elohim mm -hmm. because he's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And you can see it right in the Hebrew language from the very beginning. And this one, so because of that reason, is by context whether they know if it's talking about God or the gods. So it says that he's judging in the midst of the gods, and he said, how long will you judge unjustly? And you can tell by down here, this verse that Jesus quoted, you are gods. I have said you are gods, all of these children of the Most High, but you will die like people. So Jesus was saying that he was talking to the people that the word of God was coming to. And um, so in the context, like you can tell that he's talking to us. We are the children of the Most High. We are like like superheroes for God to change the world. And that's, you know, that's the place he wants us to be in. And so he's saying to us, how long will you judge unjustly and lift up the faces of the wicked? Because I think it's just so perfect for the way the church is nowadays, because we, a, a lot of the circles that I've ran in, it's like, we look at the world and we're like, oh, well, this is supposed to happen and it's just going to get worse and worse. And like this kind of fatalistic approach to everything, which completely is a cop out for what we're supposed to be doing in the world, because that's not Jesus said, occupy till I come. He didn't say, just quit your job and go stand on a hill and look in the sky until I show up. He was like, no, you have to work. He said, there's that parable where he's like the guy goes away and he leaves his servant in charge of feeding the people at the right time. Mm -hmm. And if he comes back and the guy is doing his job, then happy is that servant. But if he comes back, if he delays and the guy, the servant is like, Oh, well, my master's not coming back. And he starts being stupid. <laughs> whatever, like beating the servants and eating all the food himself or whatever, then he, that's not going to be good for him when his master comes back. And so I think that is kind of where that falls into. Like we are these people that God is saying, why are you not doing anything when terrible things are happening in the world? And he's saying, um, judge the poor, like and vindicate the poor is what he's saying there. And the orphan, um, I can't see it either without my glasses. <laughs> Um, do justice to the afflicted and needy, deliver them, save them out of the hand of the wicked. And then he says about us, because he knew that we would be like this. Maybe we've always been like this. He says, they neither know nor will understand. They walk in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. So he's saying, because you, my people, the ones that are made in my image and are supposed to be like, you know how it says, in Ephesians 5, like, as dearly loved children, imitate God. Like, we're mm -hmm. supposed to be, like, imitating him, like children, you know? And and because we don't listen to him, like, the foundations of the earth, like, the nature responds to all the injustice that's happening. Like, there's more earthquakes, there's more hurricanes, there's more, you know, tidal waves and tornadoes and stuff because like so much injustice and God's people just kind of step down and don't like, they don't even, we don't even know what we're supposed to be doing, let alone be doing it, you know, because of just our mindset. And so he said, said this, I've said, you're God's all of you sons of the most high. So basically you're superheroes. I've given you these powers and you need to like use them. Even if you are mortal right now, and so in, in the, in light of all that, all of that to say that this Elohim down here in the context of this, I'm pretty sure this should be rise. Oh God, you people that I've been talking to this whole time, get up and judge the earth because you will inherit in all the nations. So that's the first thing <clears throat> that um, we need to know is that like, we are his hands and feet to finish the work that he started when he was here, like as one person, like he went back to the father and he sent his Holy spirit to us 
so that he could have like all of our bodies to do his work with that we would all go around doing the things that he did and greater works because we believe into him and his holy spirit lives in us the same spirit by which he was doing all that stuff lives inside of us so that we can do the same things that he did and greater things so um so there's all of that but i want to talk about the power of praise we're going to go to psalm 149 and so he's talking to the kings of the world there no he's talking to us we are kings did you ever notice that verse let me show you a different verse. so it's only for true christian is it like a yes it's, for, it's prophetic to people that after jesus came He's the firstborn of the new breed, of the new humanity. He was the second Adam. I'm going to show you one thing real quick before we... It is in First Corinthians. Is it First Corinthians? Um, Let's see. It's in Romans 5. Here it is. So in Romans 5.17, um, and this kind of, this whole passage is kind of talking about this, how because of, uh, because of Adam's sin, then because of one man, the first Adam, sin in the world and death through sin and death passed to all men, sin was in Sin was in the world until law, but sin is not charged where there is no law. But nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who didn't do the same kind of sin that he did. Um, but the free gift is not like the offense. So um, then it talks about how. Jesus. I don't know if it goes into him being the second Adam here, but that's kind of the idea that through his obedience, then we all came to be righteous. So in verse 17, it says, For if by the offense or the sin of the one death reigned by the one, how much more those who are receiving the abundance of grace or favor and of the gift of righteousness shall rule in life by the one Jesus Christ. And this word rule yeah this word rule is talking about like reigning like a king like a queen so we rule in life like kings and queens through the one jesus christ and then it goes on to say that through one offense everybody was put into condemnation but in the same way, through Jesus' righteousness, we're all justified, we're all made right. And then um, I like these here. It says, as through one man's disobedience, the many were constituted sinners. And that word constituted, it just means to place down permanently. So by Adam's disobedience, all of us were placed on permanently as sinners, like everybody that would ever come into the world. But now Jesus is the second Adam, and it says, so also by the obedience of the one, the man will be placed down permanently as righteous, because we're righteous with his righteousness. But the law was added. It came in beside so that the sin would abound. But where the sin increased, the grace hyperabounded is what it says in the greek so the grace is overflowing where the sin was increasing because of the law so that as sin ruled in death so also grace might rule through righteousness to everlasting life through jesus christ so i just wanted you to see that that when we're receiving his favor and the gift of righteousness like our righteousness is god's righteousness and it comes by believing into what jesus did believing into jesus and that is what gives us the superpowers, so to speak, and um, makes us these people that he's talking about. 
in Psalm 82, that we, it's our job to change the world, just like Jesus came and he changed the area where he lived. Like he brought so much healing and so much life and deliverance. Like he drove out demons, he healed the sick, he, you know, brought abundance into places where there wasn't much or whatever. And so, okay. Yeah, it's, it's strong that you, God calls us gods. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're his little, we're his children. Yeah, you are gods. Mm-hmm. Made in his image. And when it says... It's the first time I ever heard of that. Yeah. God, God actually himself calling us gods. Too. Right. People don't talk about it. Yeah. With a little G. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, little exactly. Gods. Because we're, like in the Greek, when they use the word sun, it's huias. And that means uh, that means that you look so much like the father that people can tell the son looks like the father like mm-hmm. there's that resemblance and that's what it is like we mm-hmm. are related to god you know because of what jesus did and so we look so much like him that people can tell that we're his so yeah mm-hmm. we're the little gods to his big god okay so in psalm 149 hopefully this is all making sense and i'm not going too fast <laughs> um psalm 149 so it says praise Yahweh sing to Yahweh a new song his praise in the assembly of the saints let Israel rejoice in the one who made him let the sons of Zion be joyful in their king let them praise his name in the dance let them sing praise to him with the timbrel and the lyre which is a kind of guitar like a European kind of guitar For Yahweh takes pleasure in his people. This is why we should be so happy that we're dancing and making music. Because Yahweh takes pleasure in his people. And he beautifies the humble, the gentle, the downtrodden with salvation. Let the saints, and saint just means um, a special one that is belongs to God. Because, let, let me see what this Hebrew word is here. Yes. I love this Hebrew word for saint because it actually means the kind ones. And that's also a a synonym for the godly ones because the outstanding characteristic of God is his kindness. And so when we're like him, we're the kind one. And that's what it says. Let the kind ones exult in glory. And and that's like a splendor, like a, a weighty, glory um let them sing aloud on their beds and the exaltation of god in their throats and a sword a two-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations punishment on the peoples to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with bands of iron to execute on them the written judgments this honor or splendor have all the saints this is an honor for all the saints all his kind ones Praise Yahweh. So, what does he mean? Execute vengeance and punishment. Good question. Um, there is also, punishment. yeah, an interesting thing in the Bible is that um, sometimes it talks about principalities and powers as kings and princes. And so, and you guys know principalities and powers like the demonic. Like, <laughs> forces that are over regions like bigger the bigger ones that are over nations and regions so we have to fight those guys yeah um and so but we do it in oneness with god so like whatever he says you know it's his the judgment's written it's what god has decided needs to happen and i think there is an element where sometimes you can take authority over um maybe the spirits behind even the human kings and, mm-hmm. you know when you have to when you need to to change the injustice that's happening um yeah it's really that person's good is evil presence is corrupting them it can be so you yeah have, like that presence and they have yeah to re- I don't know if they're good, but like they have a free will, but there's a sense where they're being influenced by something evil. And there's a, there's a, 
a place for like taking authority over and binding that. And, evil. They, and they don't know that's where we come in. Yes, like, exactly. That's what God says you have the superpowers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so as we and to help those guys, right? And um, so the power of praise, though, in the midst of all of this, like ex- executing vengeance and stuff, there's there's a connection. Um, and yeah, and, um, there's that place in the new Testament where Jesus said, uh, I give you the keys to the kingdom and whatever you bind on earth will have been bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will have been loosed in heaven. You guys remember that? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of ties in with this, like we bind those kind of spirits and then we lose you know the holy spirit we lose the angels we lose like the good things to go into where they need to go and then i want to look at psalm 8 also because i think it'll kind of shed light a little bit too so um It says, O Yahweh, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Excuse me. Goodness. And then then it says, out of the mouths of infants and toddlers, you have ordained strength because of your vexers, because of your opponents, to cause the enemy and the avenger to cease. And then it just goes into, like, when I look on the heavens the work of your fingers the moon and the stars which you have established what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him because you made him lack a little from god and you have crowned him with glory and honor so you saying you made him just a little lower than god oh yeah yeah the hebrew does say god um i think the septuagint or the greek um, somebody quoted this in the New Testament and it said angels in Greek. But anyways, but this says you made him just a little lower than God and have crowned him with glory and honor. You made him rule over the works of your hands. You have put everything under his feet and then all sheep, oxen, animals of the field, birds of the heaven, fish of the sea, everything that passes through the sea pass. Oh, Yahweh, our Lord, how majestic in all the earth. So... Out of the mouths of infants and toddlers, you have ordained strength because of your opponents to cause the enemy and the avenger to cease. And Jesus actually quoted this verse in Matthew 21, 16. Let me show you real quick. Uh, Matthew 21, 16. When the, after the triumphal entry, and then um, they were like, crying out to him in the temple. The children were crying out in the temple and saying Hosanna to the son of David and the Pharisees were all ticked off. And they said, don't you hear what they're saying? And Jesus said, yes, didn't you ever read out of the mouths of infants and toddlers? You have perfected praise. And then he just left and went to Bethany. And so it's interesting because when Jesus quoted it, instead of ordained strength, he used the word perfected praise. And what that tells us is that it's the same thing. Like there's such a strength in praise. There's like a power in praise. And so like in our team where remember Paul and Silas where we'll just go there. (laughs) Um, I don't know if you guys know this story, but. Yeah, I think we were there. About Paul and Silas in the jail, and then they were singing praises, oh, yeah. and then the earthquake. Okay, good. Good, you know that story. Yeah. Awesome. So that just kind of like uh, shows you in a physical manifestation, like the power of praise. Like that's an interesting story because um, he had a vision, like they were trying to go here and the Holy Spirit stopped them. They tried to go there. Holy Spirit stopped them. And then finally he had this dream and the guy was like, please come over to Macedonia and help us get there mm-hmm. to Philippi. And they find a lady. They find a lady, some lady working down by the river. Well, where's the guy that's asking for help, you know? And then he casts a demon 
part and he gets thrown in jail and then he gets the jailer saved yeah. and the jailer was probably the guy in the, in the dream you know <laughs> like he had to go through all of that to get to that guy so that was interesting um what was i gonna say i was like trying to something but do you guys have questions I think I was gonna like try to make something more clear. oh I was gonna tell you the story okay so about the principalities and the powers okay so this is this is how this works like um this one guy he went to Africa he was like doing a crusade um like evangelistic crusade on the field about that where you just come in it's really awesome when you're overseas like africa or somewhere or asia they just come in and they just get everybody together sometimes they just like feed everyone or something get everyone to come and then um they'll just tell them the good news of jesus and then everybody will get saved they'll heal deliver like everything awesome it's an awesome thing Anyways, so that's what this guy was doing. I wish I could remember all the details, but so he had just done this trip and he came back to the hotel room and this principality falls to the hotel room. Mm -hmm. So he gets home and he's like, okay, Lord, well, what do I do with this thing, you know? <laughs> and uh, the Lord is like, just start worshiping me. Just start praising me. So, oh, no, wait, that's not what he told him first. He told him, I want you to put the blood of Jesus on the walls, this thing in the floor. And so he did that. He's like, now what? Okay. Well, it would be the considered the blood at that time, with oil? No. You just prayed for it? It's a, um, oh, okay. it's a spiritual reality that you oh, can just okay. speak. Okay, speak it. Yeah. And so he did that. He just put, you know, I, I put the blood on the walls and the ceiling and the floor everywhere. And then... So, and then he said, now what? And the Lord said, just start worshiping me. So he's like being praising God. Then he looks over and reality is just tortured. It's just so tormented. It's like freaking out. And then, and then like, okay, now what? Lord? And God was like, just open the door and tell it it can leave. <laughs> so he opens the door and it was like, <laughs> like he never saw it again. Like it learned this lesson. <laughs> Really, but it couldn't go through the door. It couldn't go through the blood of Jesus. They oh, can't go through the uh, blood of Jesus. It didn't want to go through the walls. It can't go. It, it burned that, like a barrier. They had to open and, the door. And, for yeah, him. exactly. He had to open the door and dismiss it. But that's weird. That means, well, no, that's not weird. Well, it is, but it's because it's like, it's a supernatural thing on a on a physical wall. Right. It's a spiritual thing on a physical wall. Yeah, like, so yeah, like my grandma was also told me about oil. It's like, have oil and just... Mm -hmm. you, yeah, but the Lord tells you absolutely have to have yeah, oil. I've done that before. It's like, yeah, let's go oil. Yeah. I, yeah. Oh, I never got. Never got. <laughs> I have done that. Like, if the Lord tells you, it's like, like all tell you all kinds of stuff. Like, y'all want oil? Yeah. <laughs> You kind of see, you kind of see the drip. Oily walls. I don't know. Yeah. 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 No. Um. One time when I was living with someone and she kept letting someone in that I could tell was demonized, and they went somewhere, and I was like, all right. I'm going to anoint everything, and those demons are going to stay outside when he comes in. They are not coming in no more. And I, like, got my, my I actually had so it was kind of nice. And I just, like, put it over the doors. Like, you just take it. When you anoint, just means to rub. So, like, I just put it over the doors like that, and then, like, over all the windows. And I was like, and I put the blood of Jesus everywhere. I was like, not coming in here. <laughs> And yeah, it makes a difference. <laughs> so, yeah, whatever the Lord shows you to do. Um, <clears throat> and also, like, this one guy that I follow on um, Fire and Glory. Let me know if you guys are tired and need to go home. <laughs> um, 
he talking about uh so he he's and his name is jeremy nelson and he was in indonesia he actually went to indonesia back when they would just chop your head off just for being a christian like he went, mm-hmm. you know 15 years ago or whatever and um so he gets there and the first thing they tell him is the story they're like yeah, we had this pastor and they came, and they chopped his head off and they put his body on this side of the road and his head on this side of the road. And this old lady came and she thought that was disrespectful. So she went and got his head and she put it next to his body. And then he came back to life and then he started preaching some more. Jeremy's like, why am I here then? <laughs> like that guy should be preaching. I don't have anything to say. <laughs> what? That really happens? Yes. Yes. That's... In those places, you would not be. And so, yeah, anyway, amazing. Jeremy is like freaking out. He's like, yeah. the head choppers are going to come in the RV and yeah. everything, you know, because it's illegal to be a Christian or whatever. Only reason why he was there, this guy um, won the Indonesian I contest or whatever, and he was a Christian. And so the prize was he got to do what, bring whoever he wanted in do whatever he wanted so he wanted jeremy to come in and do a crusade <laughs> so he so so he's like freaking out and he's like praying tongues for like a half an hour 45 minutes Lord, what am i gonna do <laughs> the head and everything like this. <laughs> it's like what do you want me to do here and then <clears throat> so god told him all right this is what you do you get up and you say the first five people that come up here are going to get healed. The first five deaf people that come up here are going to get healed or my God isn't real. He's like, I don't want to say that. <laughs> come on, God. He's like, God's like, remember that time you said you'd do anything I told you to do? <laughs> he's like, and he's like, this is vision of himself. Is there anything you want, Lord? <laughs> he's like, all right. Okay. So, so he's like, he gets up there and his voice is squeaky. He's like, God says the first five people, the first five deaf people that come up here are going to get healed or he isn't real. And and he's like, man, I hope there's five deaf people in this crowd. So five deaf people came up, like exactly five. And so so he's praying for the first one and his ears pop open and gets the next one. He, you know, he can hear and then he gets the one he can hear. So the, by the fourth one, he's like, <laughs> heals the fourth one and then the fifth one, he just um, is a, a girl. She has her hair like this, and he just puts his hands like this, and like be open or whatever he says, just in Jesus' name or whatever. And, um, and then she pulls her hair back like this, and all the people in the crowd knew her, mm-hmm. and she was born without an ear, just a little flap. Oh yeah. And she had a perfectly formed ear, and they all saw it. All yeah. these Muslim, this whole crowd of Muslims is just freaking out because they know this girl. She was born without an ear, and now she has a perfect ear, and like she's hearing. And so um, then, of course, like people are getting saved and everything. And he goes to talk to the governor because this girl is the governor's niece. And so the governor says, "All right, you're going to be on all the TV stations in this region for the next two nights, and like." all this crazy stuff that happened and um this kind of thing like everywhere he went in indonesia like this crazy stuff is happening and even with the government like people in government and like billionaires and like and so because there are so many this kind of thing is what's happened um that's why there's as much there is now now you can't be a christian as long as preaching or whatever oh, right. <laughs> they, 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 you can get away with coming in there and being a christian mm-hmm. like they won't chop your head off but unless you like start telling people about jesus and they think you're like converting people or whatever push it to right emerge, or... right oh, so man. it's progress like that and the progress happens because he listens to god and he just does whatever god says and one time he went to this other region and like the army was there and he was nervous and he was like, okay, Lord, what's, you know, like going on? What I do. And he saw, he's a seer, like he sees in the spirit. Mm-hmm. And so he 
saw this um, huge angel, like two or three stories high angel. And he had this principality and headlock and he was poking it like this on the head. He was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, the miracles broke out and people got saved in the ark. Like, oh, we're leaving. <laughs> you know, like that. So, yeah. Um, and so many places that he's gone, like, the he went to this place in Canada and um this guy got healed of eight and he went to the doctor and got the extra test and he was completely healed and so um turns out that this guy was the head drug dealer in the area and his entire family was like the drug ring of that town and they all got saved and the crime rates dropped too like you know to almost nothing and then there was another place he went and um like all the whole entire gang was there that was responsible for the crime like of that area and like 95 percent of them got saved and the crime rate just dropped and a uh, by liberty sorry i forgot the time <laughs> he just left <laughs> he's a person that goes to bed early um uh so yeah, they, they all got saved and the crime rate just fell to almost nothing. And that's that's what I'm talking about. Like, we get to do these adventures with God and we get to change nations and change communities and change the world. And it's, it's about focusing on God and it's about listening for his strategies and it's about, you know, believing him, whatever he says, and, you know, saying what he's saying. Like he always says, um... Jeremy always says, like, when God shows you something, then you have to say it. You have to, like, you know, decree whatever God says, because then the angels, they're listening for God's word. And you, you speak God's word on the earth, and then they're loose to, like, do whatever God is saying. So, 